Trinity Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm Pastor Williams. I'm the associate pastor here, and I'm in charge of the morning service. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. To get started this morning, I want to offer a short prayer. So if you just simply bow your heads wherever you are. Our Father and our God, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. We thank you for the blessing of being able to still be alive. We pray, oh God, that you would fill us with your presence this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue on this new series, or if you were with us last week, we, we started this brand new series entitled Crazy Faith. And so last week we talked a little bit about crazy faith, and we defined that as being an intense, impractical confidence or trust in somebody or something that's not really based on any proof or based on anything logical. And so today we continue in that series, and, and this is Crazy Faith Part 2, or you may want to call this Crazy Faith Meets Fear. Crazy Faith Meets Fear. Let's look at this. If you've got your Bibles with you, and I know you do, over in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 26, let me read it to you. It says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed, dismissed everyone, he went up into the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because there was a storm and wind blowing against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Watch this. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they yelled, and they began to cry out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. It's interesting, as we look at this story, it reminds me that crazy faith will overtake fear every single time. When we think about fear, think about it. What's fear? Fear, one writer said, is to be afraid or, or to be apprehensive about something. It's, it's an unpleasant feeling that, that often has strong emotions attached to it because of some anticipated danger that we think may happen. The scripture says that, that Jesus had been teaching and preaching all day and he makes this executive decision. He, he tells the disciples, listen, you guys go ahead without me. Nobody asked how he was going to catch up. None of the disciples asked, what are you going to do? He just simply says, you guys go ahead. I'll catch up with you later. Let me, let me dismiss the crowd, and then I'll meet you on the other side. And so the disciples, think about it. They get into this small little boat, and they launch out. On their, other way, on their way to the other side of the lake. The amazing thing is, the text tells us that as it begins to get dark, they begin to get worried. But not only do they get worried, it says they are so afraid because the wind begins to blow just a little bit on the ship. And then Jesus recognizes what's happening. And he starts walking on the water. you got to get this. He starts walking on the water to where they are, and they see this figure. It's, it's somewhere around midnight. They see this figure coming towards them, and yet there's no boat. Now, you've got to put yourself in the disciples' place now. You know, we read this story, and so we know what's going to happen. And so we don't really understand the entire pathos that's happening here. But think about it. It's dark. It's late. The wind is blowing, water is pushing around. And then they see something coming towards them. Now you would think it's a ship moving towards them, but as it gets closer, they recognize that it's not another boat, but it's actually somebody walking on the water, and they become terrified thinking that it's a ghost coming towards them. 
Now, I got to tell you, as somebody who's afraid of the dark, yeah, that's what I said, and you already know that about me. As somebody that's afraid of the dark, I can put myself in their shoes and say that must have been a terrifying experience for them. To not know what is moving, and yet it's coming towards you. The amazing thing about crazy faith is that crazy faith has the ability to look fear in the face and actually deal with the fear and not panic around it. You see, fear is one of those things that forces us to step away from anything that's different or anything that's unknown. We don't try new things. We stay away from new things. We stay stuck in where we are. And a lot of that has to do with us feeling afraid. But crazy faith embraces our courage and it allows us to step into places that we ordinarily would not go into. Some of you have been stuck in the same job for a long time, even though that job is unfulfilling to you, even though you feel like you're not making a difference because fear has you so locked in that you don't think you can go anywhere else or do anything else. Crazy faith allows us to step out of the comfortable and to step into that which is uncomfortable and allow us to be blessed in the process of making sure that it happens. Crazy faith releases us to move forward into that which God has planned for us in our destiny. You see, fear has this this way of immobilizing us and keeping us from moving to become the men and the women and the boys and the girls that God has destined and ordained us to be. Crazy faith, on the other hand, instead of immobilizing us, it actually releases us to step into the destiny that God has for us. Watch this thing. The disciples are in this ship, and they're packed in this little thing. Something is walking to them on the water, and then all of a sudden, as it gets closer, they hear this voice, and, and it's a familiar voice to them. They've heard it over and over and over again. And the voice simply says, stop being afraid. It's me. It's it's that same idea of small children in the middle of the night being afraid and being uncomfortable and they cry out in the darkness and then all of a sudden they hear the voice of a parent and the parent says, I'm here. It's that exact same thing happening. And so Jesus says, you don't have to be afraid. I'm, I'm right here. I got this. And then Peter, you know Peter. Man, he's always got something to say. And so Peter makes, Peter makes this executive decision. You've got to understand this. Peter makes this executive decision that he's not quite sure the voice sounds right, but they've never seen Jesus do anything like this before. And so Peter says, listen, I'm going to say what everybody else is thinking. He says, Lord, if it's you, then you need to tell me to come to you. The other guys that are in the boat, they're thinking, how do we know it's him? And Peter says, listen, let me just really put, put this thing to rest. He says, Jesus, if it's you, if it's really you, you had the ability to command that I can come to you and do what you're doing. Man, think about it. What type of person actually challenges God with this overwhelming decision, this overwhelming challenge? He says, if it's really you, if you are who you say you are, you have the ability and you have the power to have me step out of this ship and come to where you are. If it's really you, tell me to come. You see, crazy faith doesn't come naturally to us, 
But it's all a part of spiritual growth because spiritual growth always depends upon us having faith to move beyond where we are to where we need to go. You see, faith goes hand in hand with spiritual growth. The greater the faith, the greater the growth happens in our life. And some of us are worried about and we're concerned about why we're not growing spiritually. It's because our faith is stuck and it's small. Hey, stop for just a minute. What's God been asking you to do? You know, God comes to all of us and, and he has his plan to improve and increase our faith. And so he'll come and he'll challenge us to do something. Are you stepping up into the challenge or are you shying away from the challenge? People come and ask me all the time, you know, how do I, how do I get my faith to grow? The only way to get your faith to grow is to step out of and be step out of where you are and be willing to take a risk and try something different when God challenges you to do that. To step out of the boat was a big step of faith for Peter. It's what we call crazy faith. Think about it, to even challenge Jesus to say, if it's really you, you have the power and the ability to allow me to be able to walk on water. Peter is actually testifying to something that he's noticed in Jesus. And so he's simply saying, you know what the Jesus I know? He has the ability and he has the power to have me step out of this boat and to be able to walk on water. So if you can't do that, then you're not the Jesus that I know. Hey, think about that. When was the last time we challenge God to really show us who he is. And when was the last time that we believed that God is powerful enough and that he loves us enough to whatever he's asking us to do that's making us so uncomfortable that he has the power to make that happen? Stepping out of that boat is a huge step for Peter. To get out of the boat and to walk on the water. That's, that's crazy faith. To do something that you've never done before, that's so risky and yet you're willing to step into it, that's a step of faith. Stay right there. Hold on. We're not finished. The Bible says that when Jesus is challenged, by Peter, he rises to the occasion. I've lived long enough now to know that whenever I challenge God, God always rises to the occasion. On the flip side, there are times that God challenges me and I don't rise to the occasion. So he challenges Jesus and Jesus simply says, come. Oh man, that's so powerful. He doesn't get into this long dissertation with Peter. He doesn't try to explain things. All Jesus simply does is say, come. It's a one word answer. But hidden in that one word is so much power because hidden on the inside of the word is the power to accomplish the command that he's doing. So when Jesus says, come, Hidden in that one word is all the power that Peter needs to be able to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. It's, it's that same ideal over in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 3, where God steps out into the darkness and he simply says, let there be light. And it doesn't matter what light wants to do. Because the power is in the command. Light has to appear. And so when Jesus says, come, it doesn't matter what the water wants to do. It has to support Peter's weight if Peter chooses to step out of the boat onto the water. Oh, man, that's good for people like you. And that's good for people like me. 
Because it reminds us that whenever God gives us a command and a challenge to do something, we don't have to figure out how we're going to do it on our own because in the command is the power for us to be successful. Hey, what does that mean? That means that when God gives you that special needs child and you're not quite sure what to do with it, by virtue of God giving you that child and saying, you're going to raise this kid, the power to be able to raise that child successfully is already in the command of God giving you the child. That partner that God has given you as a spouse that's driving you nuts right now, the ability to love that person is already in the command that God gave you when you married that person. You see, hidden in all the commands that God gives us is the power to be successful in doing what he's challenging us to do. It reminds us that when crazy faith connects with the power of God, man, amazing things happen in our lives. It's as we connect our faith up with the power of God, there isn't anything that doesn't take place. And so the text says in Matthew chapter 14, verse number 29, it says that Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. Is that amazing? Hey, what, what type of faith does it take to step out of a boat on the water and to start walking. I'm sorry, forget the walking part. Put that on hold. What type of faith does it take to step out of a boat onto something that's not solid like water and believe that you won't sink and you won't fall? That's what we call crazy faith. Because God said it you just trust God and take him at his word and believe that if he's asking you to do it, he has the power to make it happen. See, it's not just the story that we read about one person. It's your story and it's my story that God challenges us every single day to do things that seem impossible to us. And yet somehow or another, God already has the means for us to be successful. Some of you are seeing that right now in your everyday existence. Man, your ship should have been capsized with COVID-19, and yet here you are. You're still here. People are being laid off in terrible financial situations and health situations, and somehow or another, you're thriving in the midst of all. That's what we call crazy faith. You, you somehow or another believe that God can still bless you and God is blessing you despite everything that's going on. Quick question. Just something for you to ponder. The Bible says that Peter steps out of the boat and as he steps out of the boat, he begins to, to walk on the water. And as Peter is walking on the water, question, what are the other disciples doing? What must that have been like for them? They're there. They're trying to tell Peter, listen, man, you better not do that. You're going to sink. The water's not going to support you. If I was you, I wouldn't do that. And yet think about it. They spent the same amount of time with Jesus that Peter has. And yet somehow or another, their faith doesn't allow them to step out of the boat. Only Peter does that. What does that say to people like you? What does it say to people like me? Somebody is always going to try to talk you out of what God has challenged you to do. 
God is telling you one thing and you hear the voice and it is so clear and God is asking you to do it and yet other people can talk you out of your blessing. Man, imagine what that must have been like for Peter to step out of the boat, to step on the water and not immediately start sinking. Because the text says he steps on the water and starts walking towards Jesus. Now, what are the other disciples thinking as they're watching and as they're seeing this? And why doesn't somebody else step out of the ship onto the water because they see what's happening with Peter? You can't make decisions in life based upon what other people think and what other people are trying to get you to do. It is only as we listen to the direction of God and the challenges of God that we become successful in what God wants us to do. You see, that command that Jesus gives to come, it wasn't an individualized command. It was a universal command. What that simply means is that Jesus wasn't just speaking to Peter. Peter was speaking, but Jesus was speaking to all the disciples. He simply says, come. That means that any of them, Andrew, John, any of them could have stepped out of the boat onto the water just like Peter did. But only Peter had faith that was crazy enough to do something that seemed out of the ordinary and that there was no proof that it would work. When Peter walked on the water, Jesus allowed him to experience what's possible when crazy for faith works in partnership with God. You see, there's nothing in life that we can't accomplish, no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging it is, if we're working hand in hand with God. Some of us are terrified at COVID-19, and yet somehow or another, COVID-19 never caught God by surprise. It caught the United States by surprise. It may have caught the president by surprise. It may have even caught you by surprise, but it didn't catch God by surprise. The other disciples stayed in the boat because they allowed their fear to overwhelm their faith. And it's the same thing that happens in your life and it's the same thing that happens in my life. Instead of us using our faith so that our faith gets stronger, we let the fear overwhelm us behind what people are going to think or what people are going to say or what if I'm not successful. We need to turn that thing around. Hey, what if you are successful? What if you're the Peter that's able to step out of the boat and walk on the water? What would happen with that? How would that change your life? Be careful of allowing other people to talk you out of the miracle because they're not on the same level of faith that you are. You know the end of the story. It simply said, but when he saw the wind, he became afraid and he began to sink. Think about it. As long as fear wasn't overwhelming him, as long as his faith was acting, he was able to do it. It was only when he became afraid that his faith began to disappear. What about you today? Have you discovered that even the smallest acts of faith can still be life-changing to us? He's sinking in the water now because his fear has been, has overcome his faith. And yet he still has enough faith left in Jesus. Watch this. Because the verse says, when he saw the wind, 
He was afraid and he began to sink and he cried out and said, Lord, save me. Isn't it interesting that even though the fear overwhelmed his faith and he can no longer walk on the water, he still has enough faith in Jesus that he can be saved. And that message is still the same for people like you and for people like me. It doesn't matter what you've done in life. It doesn't matter how many times you've fallen. It doesn't matter how many times you've disappointed God. Jesus is still here to save us. Don't listen to other people tell you that you've gone too far this time. That the mistake that you made, that you didn't have enough faith in God, and so you were able to do some despicable things, and now God doesn't care about you. Nothing can be further from the truth. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, and he began to sink. Every time you take your eyes off of Jesus, or I take my eyes off of Jesus, we always end up in failure. So here's my challenge for you this morning, and then we're out of here. My challenge for us today is that we will pray and ask God to give us crazy faith. You know, that faith that is so powerful that it squishes the life out of our fears. That we will start operating in crazy faith instead of allowing fear to overwhelm us and keep us from being who we are capable of becoming. God can do that for you. There is no reason why we have to stay held hostage by faith, by fear, when we have even small amounts of faith that will allow us to do just amazing things. Our Father and our God, we pray today, Lord, that, that you would transform even the small amounts of faith that we have. That, Lord, you will supersize it. You'll put it on steroids. And so that little bit of faith that we have, Lord, it becomes crazy faith that allows us to do just amazing things for you. God, it doesn't matter how small our faith is. When we turn it over to you, you allow us to be able to do just unthinkable things for you. I pray that everyone who hears my voice, Lord, that you will give us the faith that it takes to step out of the boat. Even if we walk on water for just a few moments, it's better than us having stayed in the boat. Lord, bless us with your power and with your faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for worshiping with us today. Have a fantastic week this week. And have someone else experience the same blessings that you've experienced today by sharing this broadcast with them. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you.